So we continue on with chapter four. Let's start talking about circular motion. Here's a ball on a roulette wheel. It's going round and round. It moves in a circular path of radius r. Okay. Other objects that might have circular motion might be a satellite orbiting the Earth, or maybe the ball, a ball twirling around the end of a string. This is all examples of two-dimensional motion, because we can set up a plane and have x and y coordinates. So a special case of circular motion is uniform circular motion, meaning that the speed is constant. Okay. So here's this velocity vector, which is tangent to the circle. Uh, the velocity vector has the same length no matter at what point on the circle you're at. So if we wanted to compute what the speed is, we can wait for the object to go all the way around, measure that time. We call that uh, the period, T, capital T. And we can take the circumference, the distance traveled, divided by the time taken, and, and that is the speed. So 2 pi r is the circumference, and t is the period. So this speed is 2 pi r over t. If we want to describe where the particle is, we can talk about the arc length, how far it's traveled, or we can measure an angle. So if there's an x-axis, which we can define, and we look at the how far or the particle's position over here, we can set up a line to the origin, the center of the circular motion, as being r, and we can measure the angle between that line and x. And that angle theta will increase if this uh, circular motion is counterclockwise. Now this angle can be measured in degrees. It can be measured in revolutions, where one revolution is all the way around, or it can be measured in radians. And the relation between these three units is one revolution right away all the way around is 360 degrees. It's also equal to 2 pi radians, so about 6.28 radians. The nice thing about radians is that if you measure this angle in radians, you get this nice equation relating the arc length to the radius. S equals the radius times theta if you measure theta in radians. That's why radians is the SI unit of angles. So, uh, this particle will move through some angular displacement delta theta over a time delta t. So, in an analogy with linear motion, we can define the average angular velocity as delta theta divided by delta t. And if we take the limit as delta t becomes very small, we uh, come to the instantaneous angular velocity, which is written by this Greek letter omega. It's not actually a W, even though it looks a lot like a W. It's an omega, the last letter of the Greek alphabet. Uh, is equal to the limit as delta t approaches zero of delta t over delta, or delta theta over delta t, or the time derivative of d by dt of theta. This is the angular velocity. So angular velocity omega is the rate at which the particle's angular position is changing. And since we defined the angle theta as increasing as we go above the x-axis, that means that omega is positive if the object is rotating counterclockwise, and it's negative if the object is rotating, rotating clockwise. Okay? And a particle uh, moves with uniform circular motion if omega is constant. If you were to graph theta versus time, then omega would be the slope of this graph. Okay. Also, if uh, you graph omega versus time, and you find the area under the omega versus time graph, this will be the change in angular position. So theta fine equals theta uh, initial plus omega times delta t, the area under this curve. So when the angular velocity omega is constant, that's uniform circular motion. And in this, in this case, uh, delta theta will be 2 pi right around the circle during one period, uh, capital T. So we can find omega for uniform circular motion as being 2 pi divided by uh, capital T, the period. Or you can find the period as being 2 pi divided by 
the, the, ang the magnitude of the angular velocity or the angular speed. Okay, so section 4.6 continues talking about uniform circular motion. Uh, first it talks about tangential velocity and then about centripetal acceleration, this A vector. So let's look at tangential velocity. Here's a particle going around in a circle. These green vectors show the instantaneous velocity vector. Okay, uh, and the tangential uh, velocity component, V sub t, okay, uh, is constant. It's equal to ds by dt, the rate of change of uh, this arc length uh, as the object travels. It turns out that the tangential velocity com uh, component is equal to omega times r when you express omega in radians per second. Another one of the nice things about using radians here. So looking carefully at this equation here in the units, v sub t is in units of meters per second, omega is in units of radians per second, and r is in units of meters. So the radians uh, sort of disappear in this equation, but the meters come from the r and the per second comes from the omega. So this yellow vector, centripetal acceleration, is uh, due to the fact that the direction of the velocity is constantly changing. So the acceleration of uniform circular motion is called centripetal acceleration, and it's always towards the center of the circle. The magnitude of the centripetal acceleration is constant, and we can actually find it by uh, trying to subtract um, v sub f from v sub i over a very small interval of time, delta t. And then the acceleration is the, this difference divided by delta t. So if you follow along in the textbook and looking at these two isosceles triangles and realizing that this, uh, this triangle is, is a similar triangle to this triangle, you can figure out that the magnitude of this centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared, where v is this uniform speed, divided by r. Okay. So we've been talking about uh, motion of particles going in a circle. Now I want to talk about objects that are rotating or spinning. So here is a disc or a wheel that's spinning around an axle. And we're looking at two points on the wheel, point one and point two. If we look over the same time interval, delta t, then even though point one is close to the axle and point two is further from the axle, so it moves further, both of them pass through the same angle. You can see this x here, and by the x rule, uh, delta theta equals uh, delta, delta theta one equals delta theta two, the same angle is on both sides of the x. So this means that both points move through the sweep out the same amount of angle in the same amount of time, so that means omega one equals omega two is, the, uh, is omega they have the same angular velocity. So we just say omega is the angular velocity of the entire wheel. Now, let's suppose that omega is not constant. Okay, so here's a situation where omega starts at zero, the wheel's at rest, but then someone spins up the wheel, maybe by pushing it counterclockwise. Okay, this is called non-uniform circular motion, and we can define angular acceleration as d by dt of omega. So if one second later, omega is two radians per second, and if two seconds after the initial, omega is four radians per second, then we would say that the angular acceleration is two radians per second per second, okay? or two radians per second squared, where uh, the SI unit of alpha, angular acceleration is radians per second squared. So the sine of alpha comes from the sine of omega and if omega is uh, increasing or decreasing. So in this first image, we have that omega is counterclockwise, so it's positive, and also here's the initial on the top and the final uh, vector on the bottom, so it's speeding up. So omega is counterclockwise, so it's positive, and it's speeding up, so alpha and omega have the same sign, so alpha is also positive. In the second diagram, we have omega counterclockwise, so omega is positive, and 
the wheel is slowing down. So when it's slowing down, alpha and omega are in opposite directions. So if alpha is positive, then al sorry, if omega is positive, then alpha is negative. In this case, omega is clockwise, so omega is negative, and it's slowing down. It starts off fast and it's slowing down. So once again, if an object is slowing down, then alpha and omega are in opposite directions. So if omega is negative, then alpha must be positive. So here's an alpha positive for a slowing down clockwise motion. And lastly, if omega is negative uh, and it's speeding up, then alpha and omega are in the same direction, so alpha must also be negative. So we can do angular kinematics. The same relations we had for a sub x, v sub x, and x apply analogously for alpha, omega, and theta. Okay, there's a graphical relationship between alpha and omega. If you uh, plot omega versus time, then alpha is the slope of this graph. And conversely, if you plot alpha versus time, then the change in omega is the area under this alpha versus time curve. So we can do all the same derivations we did back in chapter 2. Here's on the right uh, some equations from kinematics from chapter 2. V uh, final is V initial plus A times delta T. Analogously, omega final is omega initial plus alpha delta T. Here's S final equals S initial plus V delta T plus 1 half AT squared. Analogously, theta final equals theta initial plus omega delta t plus one half alpha t squared. And this v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta s. Okay, this turns into angles. And we have omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus 2 alpha times delta theta. So here, here we have a particle which is in non-uniform circular motion. It has tangential acceleration causing it to speed up and it's moving in a circle so it must have centripetal acceleration pointing towards the center of the circle. So the centripetal acceleration is V tangential squared divided by R where V sub T is the tangential speed. Okay? And there's also a tangential acceleration. Okay? And the magnitude of the total acceleration you find you use Pythagoras A sub R squared plus A sub T squared. The centripetal acceleration squared plus the tangential acceleration squared gives the magnitude of this total acceleration of this object. So let's sort of summarize here uh, relating the angular um, uh, theta, omega, and alpha to the linear S, uh, V, and V sub T, and A sub T. So if you have some angular displacement theta, then the distance traveled is uh, r times theta. S is r times theta. If you want to look at the tangential velocity, that's equal to omega, the instantaneous angular velocity, times r. Okay. And similarly, tangential acceleration is the angular acceleration times r.